You're listening to Castrol CarCast on Podcast One. Well, a jam-packed show. We uh, talk a lot of Paul Walker and Walker cars going to auction and some lightweight BMW E36 M3s. Yeah. Very interesting piece. And the Bullet Mustang. Going Bullet to Mustang. Predictions. Predictions on the Bullet Mustang. Hot fob talk as well. First, betonline.ag. NFL Weekly Pick'em Charity Contest is upon us. December's here. That's uh, every NFL game has playoff implications now visit betonline.ag to take advantage of the best bonuses in the business use the promo code podcast one for 50 percent sign up bonus matchups uh week 14 we got dallas at chicago baltimore buffalo that you don't know about football son but that's going to yeah. be a good game san fran at new orleans that's going to be a heck of a game kc at new england's going to be strong seattle rams have a bunch of good games out there Got five hundred bucks in rewards to give out each week to five listeners in a five thousand dollars season long charity contest. Join the conversation, Twitter with hashtag SportsNet Challenge. My pick this week: I'll take the Packers at home against the Washington Redskins. Thirty five fourteen is my prediction. Use the promo code Podcast One receive a fifty percent sign up bonus today at BetOnline.ag. <laughs> Get it on, got to get on a church, big gonna mandate, get it on, and welcome to CarCast, Matt Crowell, it's Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea. Hello. Thanks for listening. Now, our next stop is going to be Jay Leno's Garage. Yeah. We're excited to go over there and uh, watch Shelby. Yeah. As we always do, we finish the movie, and then we go to Leno's Garage. You're bringing him dinner? I'm bringing him Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Chick-fil-A. He loves Chick-fil-A. <clears throat> I don't know why. Did you, how did it happen? You, you were with me. And we were in Sonoma, and he wanted to, on the way back to his plane, he's right. like, we should But were stop you in the car on that ride? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> no, he, we were in Sonoma, and we're leaving the racetrack, and we're going to the private airport. It yeah. was like four in the afternoon, and the driver was just driving us to the private airport, which is kind of in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, that's where <clears throat> Le- Leno's feet took Chris's chair. It's right. snacks to my chair. <laughs> snacks and feet. And snacks and, and feet. Leno, Leno was like, eh. he says to the driver, eh, it's Chick-fil-A anywhere around yeah. here. And the guy's just driving. He's like, no, nah, there isn't. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, he's a little disappointed. And I knew. <laughs> now, I know everyone thinks I'm super thoughtful. But what they don't know is that I'm super <laughs> duper thoughtful. <laughs> That's where you guys get it wrong. And I was like, Jay loves Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Because he could have said anything. That's right. But he said Chick-fil-A. And that stuck in my head. And so when we were going to come over to watch Shelby after after we taped this, I said, do you want me to bring some Chick-fil-A? And he's like, yeah, about four or five guys. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. 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 Now, but what you would you offered be- up Chick-fil-A. So yeah. you, he was going to say yes to that. I don't what, even know where Chick Fil A is. He's got like five guys. Yeah. They're here. What would you do if I gave Jay the Chick Fil A and we went to his kitchen? We'll go into his kitchen at his yeah. shop, and uh, Bernard was there and his guys are there, and we start handing out the burgers. And he was like, hey, "That's the coolest over there. Some stuff, some soda, some over there. Whatever." What would you do if I said to Jay, "Hey, uh, Jay, it's twenty six dollars." Yeah, give him the like, receipt. I, I mean, I kind of rounded down. Just slide in the receipt and say, uh, yeah. just go ahead and take care of that whenever you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> if you do that, make sure I'm rolling a camera when you do. And take back any uneaten sandwiches. Take them home with you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm taking the uneaten. So. <laughs> I guess when Jay says Chick-fil-A, you just give him the standard Chick-fil-A sandwich, right? Yeah. And oh, these the, guys didn't make an order? The checker fries? No, I said Chick-fil-A, and I said, how many guys you got? And he said, Four or five guys. So we'll okay. go five guys, Chick-fil-A, standard. We gotta go standard. Is there is there like a Chick-fil-A 
like thing. You know, like when you get tacos or pizza, you get one vegetarian and three pepperoni. No, is there I, like a fried versus grilled thing? Like fried's I, bad, I, grilled's it, good. It, it, I, I think they have a bunch of options. I think when Mister Leno says Chick Fil A, you go standard Chick Fil A times five. I don't think you muss yeah, around yeah. with. I got the one grilled one. It's not breaded. I, I don't, and I don't think his guys. And by the way, I know his guys. His guys do what he does. So I was like, my guys do the opposite of everything I do. Yeah. His guys. <laughs> his guys. I know. Hey, listen, it's, it's, uh, there's six, seven dudes there. They're all middle age plus ranchers. Not one, no one cracks a beer. Right. We're they're hanging out, well, watching a movie. We do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they don't. Yeah, we got to bring their, our own. What's bring their excuse? Home. Yeah, we got to be why our own be, man. <laughs> yeah. So. Because uh, Jay doesn't drink. And now, right? and yes, Jay doesn't drink like Dane Cook doesn't drink. They like they just don't drink. They're like, they don't, uh, like Dennis Prager doesn't drink. Like, it's like, they don't really like the feeling or the taste or yeah. Yeah, it just doesn't interest them. It has nothing to do with anything other than no, just doesn't like, interest them. I saw my dad crawl up and yeah, drink himself yeah, into a bottle. No, it's just I don't drink. Yeah. That, that's all it is. And his guy, I mean, I know. Cause I've, I've flown from Atlantic City to Van Nuys with that guy on a private jet. There ain't no drinking going on. No. Now, his crew was on there. Like, yeah. they don't drink either. Actually, I don't know if there's booze on the plane at all. I think when we flew from Sonoma, there wasn't even a beer on the plane. No, I had to bring my own travelers. <laughs> like <a> pocket beer. <laughs> so I was talking uh, on ACS a couple days back yeah. about the Bullet Mustang. You and I were talking about that. Yes. No reserve. No reserve. Does Meekum. And, and I know you and Goldberg were talking about that. Yeah. Now, that car, it, it seems like the standard number that people would say for the last three or four years is that car's worth $4 million. I don't know where they got $4 million. Yeah, I don't know where they got that from. Uh, but it's $4 million. But that thing's a beater. I mean, it has rust on the bumpers. I mean, that trunk looks like uh, it was, you know, yeah. st- stored outside. I I know everyone's going to talk about the King of Cool and how cool it is and whatever. I Here's, I think, the difference between me. It's called the Hero Car. It's the one they use. All right. My here's my take. I love the story, mm-hmm. but if the story is about a piece of shit, I'm not that interested in it. You know, I'm not interested in you know the pubes in Madonna's tub, right? You know, what I mean? but okay. these are Madonnas. I'm like, yeah, but they're pubes. Yeah, you know what <laughs> I mean. This car's a pube. I mean, it's a stupid Mustang with a stupid something. Uh, I was. Uh, but you know, it, look, it's cool story. There, you know, it's it's not Herbie the Love Bug. Like it's got yeah. some grunt and some muscle and some this and some that, and it'd be a great conversation piece. And I think if you spent five point five million bucks for it, you'd be happy ten years from now. Yeah, but it's still a piece of junk. I, I think the guy that owns this car did everything right. Obviously, the story means more to some people some people than it will to others, but. First of all, it was his dad's car. He unfortunately the guy passed away. The, the, he inherited the car, got the car for free. Second thing is he didn't restore it because whatever it sells for, it's not going to make a difference whether it's restored or not. It's four million dollars, right? What is it going to uh, be? Four I, I, million, <clears throat> four point one million. And, and no, I think the restoration would hurt it. Right. So what I'm saying is, is unrestored means he didn't put any money into it. And he's been marketing it with Ford for years with the new Bullet Mustang. He's probably mm-hmm. getting paid for that. So mm-hmm. he's earning money off the car. Mm-hmm. And somebody who buys this, their choice if they want to restore it or do whatever they want, but it didn't cost this guy any money to do anything with this thing other than insure it. And the only gauge for valuation at this point is, uh, I believe there was an article when he said, I don't know what the car is worth. But I have it insured for some crazy number like eight million. And he said that's just because that's the most amount I could possibly afford. I think he partnered with Haggerty or something to do it. And he's like, it's just insured on what I could pay for. Mm. And that's it. So we have no idea. Would you be surprised if it sells for four million? Would you be surprised if it sells for twelve million? 
I don't have this car. Well, Bullet Mustang. There, the, the good news is, is this car's been out of sight for years. Yeah. And I think that builds to the lore and the story of it. Really it really did. It really And it was. really got a lot of dumb people excited. I was like, Bullet Mustang's missing. I'm like, good. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see if we can get some other Mustangs to go into hiding. Well, look, shot in the dark with no real bearing at all. Goldberg has it at $10 million. I. I feel like, and he's not even like a huge auction guy, but he gets the story. He, un- he understands what it is, and for sure, and he's like, eh, "It's I don't know, ten million. I feel like that's too much. I think it's a little high. I I see it. I see it as more than four and less than ten, and somewhere around. I mean, trying to compare it to other popular cars yeah. or whatever cars, I I. I'd I'd have it at like five or six, seven. I'll go five point seven. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it could do a little better than that. I had six in my head. I had eight on the high end, six to eight. That's too big of a range, but I feel like it's a six range. Also, I think whoever's like in the room, they're gonna want like a like an exciting hammer price. So it's probably gonna round out at something like a big six or a mm-hmm. or. You know, or a seven. It's not going to be six nine. Mm-hmm. You know, someone wants to push it to that number. Uh, but also, like, who do you think buys this? Do you think a fan and a collector buys it, or do you think a museum buys it? Mm. I don't know, but I'll be very. I'll be watching when that thing goes off. That's Meekum, right? Yeah. Um, In January. Then you got the Super Performance. GT40, Ken Miles car. Mm-hmm. That'll be... That's the movie car. That's the, the movie car. The Sorry. hero car in the Ford v. Ferrari movie. Yeah, I think there were two hero cars, and that's one of them. I'll be very curious what that thing goes for. I like that piece. I like, I like that I like idea. that piece, too. I, I'm not like a, much of a tribute or a clone car kind of guy, but I think I think the movie was good, and I think it's kind of special, and it... It's you know it's not going to go for huge money I don't think and and I think down the road it it's going to do well. There, Arguably this this bullet Mustang would be a good example. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right? there's the, there's the Paul Walker cars, the lightweight M3s. Does he have three of the? I thought there were three. Uh, I think you he said has two. Five. I think he has five. Not of the lightweights. Yes, the, but, five but of the lightweights. He has like a ninety one and a ninety five and a couple of others. I think there was a. I think there was five. Boy, hold the phone. I, I don't think they made a 91 lightweight. Yeah, you have to check check the Barrett-Jackson website, but uh, I, I I cruised through an article that said there was there was five of them. And e- then, E36. Yeah, and then... Yeah. Uh, I don't think they did a 91. What'd they do? Max Paddle. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm also just seeing that right now. I'm, okay. I'm there's five. There's five, but the, no, we know what years they are. Maybe it's on the Barrett Jackson website. Was there an E30 okay. lightweight? I'm no, they're all 95. They're all 95. Yeah. Jesus Christ! Come on, man, you lost your fastball. I'm telling you, there's. The, is he selling no, he another has, BMW? He has an E30. That's a yeah, he has, he has an M3. Yeah. E30 that I think he's selling. Okay. They didn't do a lightweight in those cars. They did just did a coupe. Look at you. You're way off. Okay, but he is selling a 91. <laughs> yeah, but still. And I know it's an M3, but come on. Dude, it's an E30, not an E36. That's why I just asked you if there's You're an E30. way line. off. Like, wait, yeah, I'm not really concerned way about off. it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. He was super proud of these cars when I spoke to him like a couple of months before he died. We did that track day at Willow Springs. And all, first on the list of of cars, he has his 2006 Toyota Tundra or something. I think that's what he showed up at the track with, mm-hmm. and then he was talking about his lightweights, and he loved these things. Well, I will say, and you can look up at uh, Hammer Price or something and see what these things go for because I don't have a real. I I imagine these things are in the. 85 to 115 120 yeah. range that's that's a guess i have not really seen too many sold they didn't make a lot of them i went and looked at ones at, at a dealer i went and looked at it at, at like a dealer in like mm-hmm. 97 or something and i was like god it's a lot of money for a car that's just it's got the same 240 horsepower 
in yeah. line six. It's minus the radio. It's got like cloth seats or something. Like we've shaved uh, 161 pounds out of it. Yeah, it's like yeah. yeah, but we still don't have 250 horse. Like here's my thing. I want it coming and going. Go ahead and shave a bunch of weight off it, and then go ahead and tweak the motor and, right. and get 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 me to 300 horsepower. And now we're talking something cool. The E30 M3 Coupe had an Evo edition that was cool. I don't think it was a lighter weight. They just got a little more horsepower out of the engine, stroked it and whatever. Anyway, I looked at these cars and I thought they were cool pieces. Like to me, I like a European car and I like the kind of finesse cars, a lighter weight car with yeah. a little less grunt, but but still scooted around the track. And 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 this to me was like, if, and I understood why he's bragging about it now, because like, if you are into a lightweight BMW E36 M3 and to, to the extent that you have four of them, it's like, it's sort of like, it's like when you see, like you're at a, you're an Italian restaurant, everyone's ordering spaghetti and meatballs. And then one guy goes, Asabuco. <laughs> and you go, oh, that guy knows. That guy knows this place. Or he knows yeah, Italian yeah. food or something. He knows. Like, or when you, I would say this about, I used to say it back in the day, but you see the guy in the Audi 8 series sedan versus the BMW 7 or the Mercedes run. That guy knows cars. Like, that. that's a cool piece. Like, this suggests you know cars. Like you're, this is a mm-hmm. finesse car. It's not. It's not just no. Hey, it's Kakuda with a Hemi. Like it's. It's a different. It's a. It's a finesse car that most people don't know about. Yeah. Wouldn't really care about. Don't really get it. And, and I think. I think for Paul Walker, it was something that caught his attention, and he started to see it as collectible. And his other cars, he bought for fun and 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 things that he liked. And you can see that in his collection. But these. I think he had one and drove it and liked it, and then he saw the collectability of it. My question for you, though, is is this: and uh, uh, is if it's a hundred thousand dollar car, is it is it going to move five at a hundred grand each, or do you think that there's five on one docket is going to bring the price down a little bit, make them all you know ninety one thousand? I don't know. You got to put a date on the bring a trailer max pad or this year or whatever. Uh, July, July. So July one sold for sixty six. K on bring a trailer, which yeah, cool looking car feels a little light. It feels a little light. I thought they were knocking on the door of a hundred thousand. And this thing could have some miles on it, but they're most always low mileage cars. But sometimes people get these cars and they tweak them a little bit and they lose a little of the value because mm-hmm. they did the intake and the thing back, the whatever they bolted a bunch of junk on or they did something to them. I don't know what the description of the bring a trailer one. You can look it up. Yeah, sixty seven thousand miles, which is kind of high mileage for that kind of car. Yeah, and uh, it is different because Paul Walker's got five of these. He probably has one with eleven miles on it or something. He like that. has four. <laughs> <laughs> uh he's got four of the lightweights. But <clears throat> Walker's stuff, I especially if he got it any anywhere close to new, I guarantee has little to no miles. Yeah. It's almost seventy thousand miles. It's like uh, somebody used that car. Yeah. And Thus, the 66 number. I, I would say if you had one of those with 4,000 miles on it and it was totally pristine, that, mm-hmm. that is 100 grand. But you're right. Do all four of them get 100 grand? I don't know. Are they no reserve? They're no reserve, correct. But uh, Gooding, uh, Gooding 2017 Amelia Island, one sold for 145,750. Well, that's that must special. have been with 400 miles on it or something weird. All right, let me hit Zorro. You can figure that out, Max Pat. Also, we have a picture of Jay Leno eating a Chick fil A sandwich. <laughs> I want you to study that picture. I want you to learn that sandwich. Kalen has analyzed it. He knows what I exactly. Know Make what sure you get the right sandwich. It. Do we see a sliver of tomato on there? That's a different sandwich. We're about to find out. All right, Zorro.com, Z O R O.com. Find everything for business of any size and almost any industry. Tools and equipment, safety office and cleaning supplies, and more. Tons of stuff for electrical, plumbing, contracting, manufacturing, and more. Brands you know and trust. Stanley, 3M, Milwaukee, Schneider Electric, Rubbermaid, just to name a few. Amazing customer service from real people based in the U.S. Fast, free shipping on orders of 50 bucks or more. We use them here. You should use them there. Whatever your business is, big or small, or just household stuff. You just need 
Uh, you want some tools. You want some, they have like Rubbermaid and stuff like that, trash cans or whatever, supplies. They have all the supplies you'd use around your house as well. Just visit Zorro.com slash Adam. Sign up for the Z-mail. Get 15% off your first order. That's Z-O-R-O dot com slash, oh, is it slash CarCast here? Yeah. Yes. Z-O-R-O dot com slash CarCast to get your 15% off. All right. So this lightweight uh, that's sold for 145 it's one of 126 examples built, three owners, and low mileage examples supported by Carfax Vehicle History Report. What's- Still, that's not 400 miles. No. How do you get from 140-something to 66? Gooding had a good day. Good auction there. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Or somebody had a bad day on bringing a trailer? I'm not sure. Uh, You know... three owners. You don't... Yeah, that's not the what I was talking about. Which buy it, push it home, put it on blocks, (laughs) put a cover over it. That three owners is three owners. Yeah. We're going to have to dig into the Paul Walker cars because if I recall correctly, and it's been many years now, I think he told me he had one that he did drive a little bit, mm-hmm. but then he got another one with you know negligible miles, you know, right. whatever, just 500 or 50 or whatever. He's like, that's collectible. Well, the – now – you know, the guy who sold his for 66 on Bring a Trailer would have been aware of the Millie Island one, probably, and would have had some reserve or something, ostensibly. So, so there's something we yeah, don't know. Yeah. Haggerty, yeah. Haggerty says the number one condition concourse value for an M3 base model has increased 21% over the past five years to 44000 Without a celebrity owner like Walker... An M3 lightweight in number one condition would likely sell in the neighborhood of 132,000. Uh, so expect the Fast and Furious connection to bring more, uh, more of each example. So with Paul Walker's name, it's about a buck thirty. That's uh, there, without without without. without. Yeah. And then the record price was the one forty five that I oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, a, a, a number one condition one is about a buck thirty. Uh, yeah, but they're they're saying a number one condition without is gooding because that's the hammer price price plus the vig, right? Without Paul Walker's name on yeah. it, so now we got to figure it out. I mean, we got uh, Steve McQueen. Like, when's Paul Walker's legend yeah, yeah. going to start growing? You know, if at all. But I'm sure it will. Like, so these are all interesting stories uh, that are coming up. Um, you let's see. So we had the bullet Mustang. I am all over the road. Uh, let's. Yeah, you're getting a new car. Yes, I'm uh, getting an Infinity. An Infinity uh, SUV, the G80. Oh wait, QX. <laughs> QX80. 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 Yeah. The the big SUV. Mm. And and uh, I know you wanted an SUV, so this is a, a deal with Infinity. You're gonna drive this thing for for a year. Yeah, and, I'm, uh, I'm getting old, and I can't take the potholes anymore, like yeah. in L.A. And I and I found myself, I guess the kids getting older and stuff like that, and Italian or friends want to go to the Malibu or whatever. Yeah, this is like, big. It's three row. You can fold it down. You can put. I had. In there I and, I just went and shot a stand up special in uh, San Diego. It's like sunny came. Lynch was with us. August, we picked mm-hmm, up. Mm-hmm. Like we're bringing wardrobe and stuff. Like I, I really could have used something a little heft to it, right? And um, so it's time. But it's it's a lot of it is based on. I moved into a house with a steep driveway yeah. and <laughs> and my air dam uh, rubs when I leave every morning. Right. Well, and I and I know you've had some frustrating issues with the uh, with the slow infotainment system in the Jag. As much as I like that car, it's a beautiful car. They they've been trying to improve that system. Like the new F Type has the latest system in it, and uh, but Infinity, oddly, Infinity and Nissan has been very slow on getting uh, the latest technology. And now the 2020 models are the first with Apple CarPlay and Android support. And uh, this is going to have CarPlay, and if you haven't used it much. 
you you get in your phone, you mount it up on your dash, you plug it in to charge it, and you use Bluetooth. Well, right. if you're going to plug it in to charge it, you plug it in, and it and it connects to – got to plug it in to connect to right. your CarPlay. And there'll be like a button on the steering wheel that is Siri. You just press and hold the button and be like, call Mike August. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's just it's, – it can't works. wait. But I the, can't wait. The one thing that I've tried since talking to you about this many, many times over the last year is – on almost every press car that has CarPlay, I've tried to get on the phone, walk to the car, get in, plug the phone in, and have it switch seamlessly to CarPlay. Mm-hmm. And do you know the difference? And maybe, whatever, it connects for a second or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. And so far, they've all been pretty good. Most of these cars are so sophisticated with the electronics. I've been even in the newest thing out there. And it's still been like, oh, the infotainment system crashed, and I had to like reboot it or something, or unplug my phone and plug it back in. But for the most part, they've been working pretty good. The way the Jag works is, if you are listening to a podcast and you walk into the garage, I I do a fair bit of garage work. I patched Sonny's bike tire the other day. I I putz around the garage a mm-hmm. little. I can't go into the garage with a podcast on because it'll f- jump to the car. Even, Even the car's you, off? The car's off so, and locked. Yeah. Well, don't use that's Bluetooth. Awesome. So that's an awesome thing. So then what you got to do is you got to get the car out. Like you got to park it down the driveway. Otherwise, it'll connect to the car and you won't be able to listen to your yeah. – or not listen to a podcast when you're working in your garage. Well, I'd say on the Infinity, don't even set up Bluetooth. Don't connect it to Bluetooth. Just when you get in it and use it, plug it in throw it in a cup holder or whatever, and just use the CarPlay feature yes. and, and see if, if that improves things. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, it's going to be exciting. Oh, it has ways too, which is the other thing too, which is the the ways with the Bluetooth, the ways with the Bluetooth, if you're listening to a podcast while driving the car yeah. and you have ways on, it does this funky thing where it just comes through the speaker of the phone. It won't come yeah, through the speakers weird. in the car like it, it the whole thing is like super frustrating like you want it to stop doing this and start doing that like it won't it won't yeah. do it like again i don't i don't know i i it, it's you can't and then if you're like the other thing here's the other thing it'll do I do radio interviews, right? Yes. And, and, and I do tons of radio interviews. And so I got like my earbud in and I got my phone on me and I'm just talking to Mac and Gatos in, in, in Phoenix, you know, and I'm like walk, but I'm walking around the shop, like trying to do stuff, you know, cause I don't want to just sit on a chair. Yeah. I'm at my shop. Like I walk around and a lot of what I like to do when I'm doing radio interviews is the same thing I like to do. When I pull into a gas station, it's like, all right, I'm going to fill up the car. I'm not going to clean the trash out of the car and squeegee the windshield off or whatever. Sure. If I'm doing a radio interview, I can't go near my car. I can't go get <laughs> something out of my car because if I go get – I got my cars full of plans or notes or jokes or something. I can't walk to the car and get something out of the back seat because it'll jump to the car. Yeah. And then I'll, they'll be doing the interview through the car speakers. Yeah, that's – no. You won't have to do that anymore. But what year is it? <laughs> Why is- does the Jag even have CarPlay? I don't even know. No, I don't, Has anybody I don't. ever tried plugging it in to just CarPlay to see if it works? It doesn't have. It doesn't have Apple. CarPlay. I don't think it does. No, it has its own system. Yeah. No, and, yeah. it, and it and it has its own system that frequently disconnects from my phone. Like I have to constantly like reboot yeah. the connection. As a guy who's on the other end of that line, a lot of the time, <laughs> all it the is time, annoying. Yeah. all the time. Yeah. No, I I I get it. Look, I, I don't think there's anything out there yet that's Wait, flawless. What's, what's worse? Like, what's be worse big. is is walk is is literally not being able to work in your garage with your car and listen to an. A, a podcast through an earbud because it jumps to the car or Lynette's Tesla starting up and driving away with the key fob outside the car or is it Gabe putting it on the tire and Lynette telling me it's in the cup holder? Like what? I think the Bluetooth thing is more ni- annoying because it happens every day, three times a day. Right. <laughs> okay. But the key fob, you know, that, that 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 was me blocking my car in with the car that couldn't be driven. Yes, and that was a life-changing moment. But also every time you're trying to talk to somebody on the phone, that affects you and the person on the oh, other end. Oh, you're right. Collateral damage. <laughs> yeah. Taking somebody out. Well, that, that's right. This uh, this should be interesting. It should be fun uh, to, to try it. And also, by the way, the Infinity, we saw it at Monterey, the white one we filmed with. And it's 
Listen, it's, uh, it's good. It's, it's beautiful. Good. I was looking at a Genesis commercial last night. Mm-hmm. I almost piped up because <laughs> I'm apt to do that, but I, I stifled myself. But there was that new Genesis flagship, like going through the snow. Oh, yeah. With the big diamond quilted diamond stitching, diamond yeah. stitching everywhere. The new mark of luxury. Diamond stitching. Yeah, you can get it on anything. It's on to that yeah. 10 years ago, I kept saying. <laughs> Where's the diamond stitching? Well, All right, I got to uh, tell you, do your spot, and then I'm yeah, going to yeah, complain yeah. So, about something. Yeah, yeah, It's about Geico. By the way, Infinity called and said you need to get some insurance on that thing. So oh, okay. everybody's got a to-do list. You, maybe you're dropping off some dry cleaning or picking up some milk. Now you can add, save hundreds of dollars on car insurance to that list, and you don't have to drop off or pick up anything. Just go to Geico.com, and in 15 minutes, you could be saving 15% or more on car insurance. So if you want some extra money in your pocket, this is the most rewarding to do you can do today. Go to Geico.com. It's not a bad idea. Bad news for you, bucko. Yeah. Seth MacFarlane's Christmas party. Yeah. Normally, Matt's my date. Yeah. When are we going? Yeah. Well... It's uh, the 14th okay. of December. I'll cancel whatever I have. I shall be at Ox in Oxnard doing two shows. Enjoy it. It's cheating Enjoy on you show. with me, Matt. <laughs> Enjoy that show. <laughs> <laughs> so that's tough love. Um, these, uh, the only thing I don't like about like I love the holidays and I love automobiles, but the commercials, yeah. they're, they're, they're starting to run me into the ground. These chicks so pumped about getting a Denali pickup truck, you know what I mean? Like the chick just over the, just the, the <laughs> reaction of every, Yeah. I, the, first off, there's the chick who got the uh, Peloton bike who's yeah. like over the moon about her husband buying her a $900 exocycle. But then there's the chick and like they get the cars are like, oh my God, oh my God, <laughs> oh my God. It's like, uh, I pulled up in a brand new Jag. A couple of years ago, it was in the garage, and I said, family, I got a new Jag. You want to check it out? And they all went, no. Nah, no. no, no. <laughs> we'll see it when we have yeah, to get we're, it. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Great. And then the <laughs> wife is totally stoked about the car, and it's got the big ribbon on it, and it's snowing outside. Yeah. And I like the one from a few years ago. It was a GMC truck one, and he got her him the black one and her the red one. But oh, she yeah. Wanted She's the like, black I like one. the red. I like the red. Yeah. Or whatever. Or Ugh. the black one, and he's like, I'll drive red. Yeah. That's, uh, no. What I get is the, uh, I get the key fob on the tire, <laughs> and then when I ask where the extra key fob is, the the proclamation comes down that uh, probably stolen by valet. Probably. <laughs> That's what they do. <laughs> That's a, uh, you know, all those guys trying to sell you key fobs when you go to uh, Tijuana? <laughs> So annoying. Yeah, yeah it's so open annoying. up the so trench coat. About. They're all hanging there yeah. in the trench coat. The little chick, like the little key gal. fobs on one side, watches on the other. One gal, <laughs> little gal selling chicklets with the dude selling the key fobs. <laughs> and they stole from the fancy sushi restaurant. Yeah. 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 I don't know how you get home if the guy steals the key fob. I don't know. He fires up the car, he brings it to you, it's running. He walks away with the key fob. Oh, that's and how then you, you get you drive off. Yeah. And it doesn't beep? It doesn't be like, beep, 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 where's the key? Well, I got to tell you, I... My mom's 2008 Nissan Altima. uh, That car has a conniption when you drive away with the key. Like, if it's running and the key's not near it, alarms and shit start going off in the car. Where's the key? I walked (laughs) out, got into the Tesla X, put the kids in, put the key, had the key on the tire, (laughs) put it in drive, rolled... Probably a half a turn, probably exactly half a wheel turn, crushed the key fob. Nice. Turned out of my driveway, drove about about a mile and a quarter, two miles, mile and a half to the school, stopped in front of the school, let both kids off. Thank God I didn't put it in park or something or shut it off or something. Um Probably just stopped there and told the kids to jump out. Probably didn't muss with the controls or anything. Mm -hmm. And then went back down the street another quarter mile away. I was at this point two miles from my house, turned around, drove back, pulled up the driveway, 
being careful to block my own car in the garage because that's important when you have a car with no backup key and no key fob and then parked it and then got out and then started working on the drain for the drainage problem that was going on by the house and Rob came walking up with a handful of key fob and it's like <laughs> somebody's key fob got mashed. I was like, I feel sorry for that person. Said, Mine's in the car somewhere because I just drove away and yeah. came back. He's like, looks like it was run over. And I was like, uh, where was that key? Wait a minute. And then I went and desperately checked the car. Of course, it's filled with garbage and fast food and stuff because it's a hundred thousand dollar car. And then I go look through all the cup holders and everything. It's like, there is no key fob. And then I dash into the house and I find the leather satchel that the key fob would have been in if I had an extra key. If the valet had not stolen the key fob, <laughs> he'd left the leather yeah. satchel behind. And then uh, at what that, point, that, that, I was out, out of fob at that point. At what point did the car tell you you're driving away without a key fob? To, in in my it, it, it to my world, nothing. Nothing. Now it it would be interesting, and you can make me a note, Max Pat. I'll go down at my leisure at some point. Go get the key fob, start the car, and throw the key fob out the window in the garage, and see if I can go down the st- see what the dash does. But. I had no recollection of any audible, hmm. I, you know, if I was hearing a, a, a chime or gong or bong, I would have like, hey, kids, put this seatbelt on. It's driving right. me kids nuts. Kids in like, the car. You don't drive it that often. Who knows? But I yeah, didn't hear anything and I didn't see anything that that yeah. much. I know. Hmm. Yes. So uh, now and I know nothing about Tesla. Lynette's in New York. So now I'm tasked with figuring out what how can we get a new key fob what do you think a tesla key fob costs i, I will t- I, I will sadly i will tell i'll tell all you poor people something right now at this point that that is the least of my worries in yeah. this particular case i have seven podcasts to do <laughs> i have a car that's trapped inside my garage that that is operable and the one outside is a brick the other one's a brick that's blocking (laughs) it in there and i have a full schedule and a full day and i got up early to drive the kids to school so that whether it's 371 bucks or 622 this is this is my this is a first world problem this is that is Mm -hmm. not my issue my issue is i need a fob and i need to move my car now thankfully i'm me and i was able to do about a 122-point maneuver to get my car while hanging the tires into the flower bed and shit out of the garage. Yeah. Like, I literally had an, an inch on the... I was able to back my car, but I had to do, like, f- yeah, 2,600 yeah, yeah. moves to finally get my car out of the garage. So once I got my car out, then it just became... Uh, our, yeah. Mm-hmm. And if it was the shop, we could have put some rollers under the Tesla. mm Yes. You know, I, 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 actually, I don't know. The Tesla's all-wheel drive, right? Mm-hmm. The Model X is all-wheel drive. Mm. Do do some of the motors always stay in neutral? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you just put a, a jack behind the rear, yeah. jacked it up, could you drag the front, I wonder? Or could you know. drag the rear? Or everything's I'm locked? I'm curious about this experiment. <laughs> I mean, Max probably probably figure it out online. Or maybe yeah. they've corrected it, but this thing's like two years old. Now... I don't know. What would you guys rather do? I think I have the answer. In the key fob department, Ex- experience what I just experienced. Now, now keep in mind, many discussions at the Corolla house about how important the extra key or key fob by the front door in case these kind of things come up. Or the time with the Audi when uh, Lynette had popped her tire and she had the weird orange space saver thing on yeah, there. Yeah. And I went and got a new tire from like Tire Rack and told Rob to go take it to the guy, the Union Tire, and like mount it and balance it and brought it, whatever. And then I said, Friday, bring the tire, come up to the house, and we'll put the, uh, we'll put the tire, put the new tire on the car. Um, car parked in the driveway, locked. Went and looked for the key fob. <laughs> Lynette's in Santa Barbara going to retreat or something. Calder had both key fobs on her. <laughs> <laughs> Could not get into the car to change the, the tire. Yeah. I think that one's better. Yeah. Yeah. 
I have so many questions. They're both fabulous. The Tesla owners that are listening, how, if you park illegally, how do they tow a Tesla? How do they, you know, can you mechanically put I think they a flat, Tesla uh, in? Can they flatbed it? You mean? Yeah, but if four wheels right, are locked right, with electric right. motors, what are they, right. they, you know, also if, is there a way to mechanically put the thing in neutral and could you push it? Out of the way? There must be some There's gotta version be some, of that. But you know, yeah, with no fob nearby, like how would yeah, one Yeah, like if the door's it? open and you can get in the door, right, because the fob's not away, but the doors aren't locked, can you get in? Can you put it in neutral? I haven't been in a Tesla in forever, so I don't even know what the what the electronics or the mechanics are of it. But Well, the, the part that really, the coup de gras, the coup de fa, bah, was when <laughs> I showed up. To talk to Max Zapata about his uh, rolling hamper that he calls a car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> over here. And I pulled up and I said, You do me a favor, son. You take that key to that old piece of shit Prius you got and put it on the tire and see if you can start that car. And he's like, You cannot. And I was you like, did it. And the phone system works great, too. Oh, <laughs> you are the bane of my existence. I'm mad. I'm seeing that Tesla's only locked the rear wheels uh, with a parking brake. Oh, well, there you go. So you can jack up the rear and drag the front around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you need to tell one. Yeah, or Or someone's going to tell one. And you're not. Somebody blocking your garage. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I know. It wasn't even there yet, but I got got there. Um, (laughs) And and then, uh, and what about what goes off? What have you read online in any form or anything about driving that car with the fob, like? Back, back at the house, or maybe it's the fact that mine was destroyed. Maybe that makes a difference. Like it didn't exist. <laughs> like yeah. my my fob wasn't left behind; it was crushed. Is that is that the the thieves of failsafe? Is like grab a fob, smash it, and it turns the car on, and you could drive it one no, time. No, it's take the fob, go to Mexico, start a new life. <laughs> yeah, there you come go. on. <laughs> All right, you can figure it out, Max Power. See yeah. what you can read. I'll tell you about Castrol Edge heat, friction, viscosity breakdown. They rob your engine of maximum performance. Friction results uh, in a loss of performance of up to ten percent. Castrol Edge. Engineered with fluid titanium technology, physically transforms to be stronger under pressure, helps fight friction and deliver maximum levels of performance for your car. Three times! Three times, fool. <laughs> stronger against viscosity breakdown than leading full synthetic oils. It is Castrol Edge. Well, one more comment on this, uh, uh, on this yes. Seth MacFarlane thing. Mm. How far is Oxnard from here? Yeah, I'd uh, I'd given that some thought. Like maybe I can hightail it, <laughs> That's whatever. What I'm thinking. But I'm doing two shows. I'm doing an eight o'clock. Oh, you want a cocktail after? Oh uh, yeah, seven thirty, <laughs> and uh, see, it's it's rough. Like I mean, could literally get out of there, do a seven thirty, and like a ten o'clock show. Yeah, have trouble getting out of there before midnight after you sign everything. Yeah, or do that all is that. Really tough. Maybe if you got out at 11.30, you could be from there to McFarland. You'd be pulling up at 12.30. Yeah, people are leaving. You're just showing up for the after party. Yeah, but you're right. There's <laughs> something to be said for that after party. Yeah, there's something to be said for that for and sure. And for a change, you'd be semi-sober <laughs> walking into the after party. Yeah. I you'll miss the band. You'll miss the band. All right, let's uh, weighs it. Yeah. We'll, we'll figure. It's we'll, worth checking. It's worth checking because the after party's the fun party. Which Chris is already shaking his head. Mm. I don't. I don't think you should have jumped right to that conclusion, Chris. That after party, man. They're they're down in the basement bar drink, yeah. drinking loudnum. Can you tell everybody to show up early and do the signing before the show? There's been occasion when I've told people I have to make a flight or I have to make a whatever. Or I have to film something or do something where I just go in advance. I can't sign after the late yeah. show. Yeah. Well, you got a few days to think about it. Yeah. I'll see you there. I'll go out there at 10 o'clock. I'll get like 12 minutes into my act. I'll go, all right, so what's going on? What else is going on out yeah. there? I guess not a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Let's bring it home. Yeah. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> Max Pata, any uh, any forums on that? Any fob forums? Not a ton. Huh. <laughs> you would think this would be, I don't know, kind of a uh, thing. Somebody, one person did 
drive off with his without um with the key just kind of nearby as well and he said there were no beeps or nothing that nothing. Right. right so but what so else, like, look i very I, rare case i certainly yeah the, it's an elite fraternity yeah. we're in, like army rangers who can actually drive off without the fob now <laughs> to be fair to this uh hard uh, comedian husband there was no contact or information from lynette or gabe but I did reach out. I did say, where is the fob? I mean, and out I, of town, out of mind, it's your problem. I got a little erroneous information <laughs> on it. I've always argued that uh, Gabe was just a text away from, you know, avoiding this. But uh, <laughs> we, don't, we don't hold grudges. Yeah. Um, so I was told it was in the car. So, of course, when I got in and drove off, I was just like, it's in the keep. It's got to be in the. It's in the cup yeah, holder yeah, somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. There's five cup holders in this car. Like, I'm not going <laughs> to I'm not gonna bother looking. I'm just driving. And the car said nothing. Hmm. Did not. Yeah, that's the part that throws me off because, like I said, mom's a whatever, 11, 12-year-old <laughs> Nissan Altima. Yeah, <laughs> this guy. shut up with that thing. Doesn't have a key near it. This guy had to have his wife drive out the key to him after he parked at his friend's house. So it yeah. was very embarrassing. And like lost the fob or? Yeah, well. He drove away. Oh, he drove it to. He drove it to his friend's house oh, without parked the key. it, right. And he had to yeah. call his wife to bring the key over. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Where did they get the extra key? <laughs> oh, right. It, it comes <laughs> with the car. Yeah. That's right. Well, he did leave the original key at home, but yeah. now everything's a phone. Now his phone is a key thing. That's you right. Know, now it's problem solved, right? Or, yep. All right. You need a code for that, though. Good luck getting that. <laughs> we got to uh, hit Chick-fil-A and get ready for uh, for Leno. Uh, Oxnard Levity, Levity Live. Don't come to the late show on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> We're boarding that place up. That's Friday and Saturday uh, coming up. Milwaukee, Paps uh, Blue Ribbon, or Paps Theater, January 24th, January 25th, Chicago. And uh, I'll be doing a stand up there, Park West. Crank Yankers on. Check that out on Comedy Central. Get that Shelby. I got the blue. We got the Blu rays now. You know, you know what are really selling the posters? Everyone wants one of those Shelby posters. Oh, yeah. We'll bring uh, we, Lena. Are we selling one. those? Yeah. All right. They're Chassis? nice. Get that uh, Blu ray at uh, Chassis, C H A S S Y. Shift and Steer, of course, available on Apple Podcasts and Podcast One. Thank you. And uh, support the show, carcastshow.com. And uh, no safe spaces, no safe spaces dot com. There's a lot of stuff out there. And check our docs out on Netflix. I think you'll like them and leave a review, leave a nice thumbs up. So until next time, Adam Crow from Matt, the moderator DeAndrea, saying keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. For the latest updates and call in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Carcast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarcastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla Digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com. Carcast Show.